Sunday morning and I just released the video on building the bandsaw. It's done. Well, mostly done. I did miss the panel <laughs> on the inside here, right here, that closes that. But it's, you know, I can get that anytime. Okay. So the video that I released this morning was a longer one, almost 30 minutes. And uh, what it is actually is a condensed version of the first three videos plus uh, what wound up being video four. I talked last time about not including a voiceover, but I changed my mind. And what I did was I edited video four fully, which I already started. I, I fully edited that. I added a voiceover to it and I released that on Patreon and locals on uh, Friday. So if you want to watch that video on its own, it's there. Uh, but in the meantime, it like the full build video covers all of the important stuff. But I did try to get it down to a good length video. I'm not sorry <laughs> that it's done. That a lot of work, right? Like I said. And uh, it's working good, working great. You can see here, it's like I'm using the... the key feature of the saw, other than this really good bandsaw, is the quick release. Now, in the end, I didn't, I didn't add a release or a catch on the back. Here, let me spin it around. So you can see, I didn't add a, a catch here to hold this up because what happens is it stays in place. It doesn't move. I've used, like I, I cut that in the video, <laughs> I cut that piece of uh, seven and a quarter inches wide piece of red oak with this blade that's on here now and it never moved from this position so I don't think I need to catch like I said I've got those uh, that bedroom furniture stuff to build but there'll be other things that I'll build along with it very much like the bandsaw it took me six months to build that bandsaw I started in October and uh, I did several smaller things in between and the, you know, the irony is that the smaller things that you spend an, like an afternoon working on and then takes a couple hours to edit, do way better, <laughs> way better than any of that will do, probably. Unless they get really fluky with it. Like, okay, I, I built that bandsaw mill a few years ago and that did really well. It's up to like 3 million views right now, which is really outstanding for nearly an hour long video. Okay, but I don't, I don't expect that this will do as well. You know, the bandsaw mill, you know, probably has a, like a, a broad, not a broader audience, but a, an audience that's probably a little bit deeper than the general woodworking topic is, or well, homemade machines would be, you know, for people that want to be out, you know, doing the outdoor thing, the woodsman thing, you know, cutting up their own lumber and building their own shack in the woods and stuff like that. So, yeah, a little bit deeper uh, niche there, I think, that, that attracted. Anyway, so the bedroom furniture, yes. I'm standing beside my drill press because I had a plan for that that I talked about before at some point. I can't recall if I talked about it on this channel. But I was going to make it on a... I was going to make the top part of it, uh, like independent, to move up and down and just have the table fixed. Because originally I was going to make this fancy raise and lower table, right? And then I got to thinking about that. Why don't you make this part go up and down? <laughs> I mean, that's what makes sense. You have this, so this goes up and down and you can, you know, still use the thing, right? So instead of making the table, you know, low or high, you lift this thing up low or high. And a good range of motion, maybe 20 inches or so. So it's, it could be down, it could be down. Like the top of it could be down here maybe, and the top of it could be up there. So if you got something really big, you put it up there. Same height as the outfeed on the miter saw so you don't screw up that, right? Because right now this table, you know, where it goes up and down, sometimes it'll get in the way for longer stock and I have to lower it or raise it so it's not in the way. So yeah, I was thinking about that. That's probably something I'll do, but that'll be more involved. Also, I was thinking about my crosscut thing that I had before on the table saw that I had before the one with the cast iron top that I made and I was kind of redesigning that and I was saying to myself now okay 
you use the other one very sparingly. Okay, so are you really going to use this thing? And the answer that I gave myself was no, I'm not going to be using this thing. So I stopped designing it. Instead, what I was thinking that I was, I could make is possibly a track that folds down from the sliding door that's covering my lumber rack. So it's a long track. It's up normally up and you fold it down and you make your cross cuts and it'll be 90 degrees. It'll be held at a, at a good 90 degrees. Okay. Like there'll be some slop or play there, but you clamp it down on the end where you should put the sheet of plywood on the, on the table saw and on the workbench, you, you fold down the track, you make your cut with one end, you know, fasten over there with a hinge and the other end out here with a clamp to hold it in place. Right? And just check to make sure it's square. So it'd be a, like a track saw that works with the battery powered uh, um, circular saw and, uh, and makes, lets you make wide cross cuts. Yeah. So I was thinking about that also. But first I got to get the shop cleaned up so I can start those night tables. At all times, keep relaxed and well balanced. Like a boxer. A man with a knife is a boxer, only he's playing for keeps. So slide those feet around, parallel to your opponent. Never cross one over the other. If you don't cross them, they won't cross you. Notice that the tip of your blade is pointed toward your enemy's eyes. 